Hello and welcome to the Beyond Shakespeare Exploring Sessions. A new week opens out for us now as we look at what we might call the Spanish Tragedy Parts 1 and 2. We might call it that. That might be a bit of a lie. Uh, we shall find out as we go. Today we are starting with the first part of Geronimo! Except it's almost certainly not Geronimo, uh, it's probably more Hieronimo, or maybe Hieronimo, pronunciations will vary. Um, the relationship between this play and the Spanish tragedy is open to an awful lot of debate. Uh, it's also maybe in relation to a play we know of in the repertoire called Don Horatio. Uh, it may be a variation on a theme of that play created later in the the lifespan uh, of, of its existence. Uh, it may be a completely separate play. It may be a prequel to the Spanish tragedy. It may have existed before the Spanish tragedy. There are a whole host of potential options. All I really care about for this session is how does this play function? We're not gonna finish this play today. It definitely connects with the Spanish tragedy. And so what we're trying to find out today is how does this play work? And, and, and what is it saying? Um, the script, as it comes to us, was printed around 1605, though we expect it existed in some shape or form, elements of it maybe 20 years earlier. Who knows? We're going to find out a lot today. We may not come up with any conclusions. That might be something we start doing as the week progresses, as we move into its, its sister text, The Spanish Tragedy, which most definitely is by uh, Thomas Kidd, though goodness only knows who wrote this thing. So, finding out who wrote this and reading it today are a team of, of foolhardy adventurers um, who are joining us online uh, today. So, I'm just going to go through the team and uh, uh, starting off the uh, reading in uh, no particular order, uh, reading Spain, Pedrangano, Balthazar and Alcario is... Hi, I'm Alan Scott. I'm probably unusual in this group in as much as I'm not a professional actor. And reading uh, Hieronimo uh, himself and Alexandro is... Hello, I'm Sarah Blake. I'm a writer, actor and director. I run a tiny little audiobook company called Sounds Curious. And reading Horatio and Volupo, or Volupo, or however he likes to say his own name, is... <laughs> I am William Sutton, and I'm an actor based in Amsterdam. And reading at the moment, Ambassador Andrea and Isabella is... Hello, I'm Gloria. I am an actor, performer, writer, teacher, um, all the things. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Excellent. And a reading uh, Medina and Lazzarotto is Helen. Helen Good. I'm uh, a historian, but I'm returning to my first love, which is early modern drama. And uh, further down my list in front of me, uh, reading Castile, uh, Bel Imperia and Messenger is... Hi, I'm Tamara. I'm also an actor and I'm currently in isolation in Germany at my mum's place with a cat who might <laughs> wander in at some point. <laughs> <laughs> we have had a selection of animals joining us across the weeks. Um, I think that's everybody in the room except myself. I am, of course, the one who always forgets to introduce himself. I'm Robert Crichton. I am your host. I am also going to be reading stage directions, uh, Rogero, uh, Lorenzo and Portugal and we say we're all reading these parts. I very quickly threw the doubling together. We don't quite have enough people. We're just gonna find out how this thing ticks and we're gonna stop every so often to discuss it and see how far we get. Right, well, without further ado, let us start reading the play and it opens the text that we have and I'm very much at the vicissitudes of what the internet has to offer. The text starts with Sounding of a signet, and pass over the stage, various people. Enter at one door the King of Spain, Duke of Castile, Duke Medina, Lorenzo, and Rogero. At another door, Andrea, Horatio, and Hieronimo. Hieronimo kneels down, and the king creates him Marshal of Spain. Lorenzo puts on his spurs. 
Prince and Andrea is his sword. The king goes along with Hieronimo to his house. After a long signet is sounded, enter all the nobles with covered dishes to the banquet. They all exit. That done, enter all again as before. Frolic, Hieronimo, thou art now confirmed Marshal of Spain by all the dues and customary rights unto thy office. My knee sings thanks unto your highness's bounty. Come hither, boy Horatio, fold thy joints, kneel by thy father's loins, and thank my liege by honouring me, thy mother, and thyself with this high staff of office. O oh, my liege, I have a heart thrice stronger than my years, and that shall answer gratefully for me. Let not my youthful blush impair my valour. If ever you have foes or red field scars, I'll empty all my veins to serve your wars. I'll bleed for you. And more, what speech affords, I'll speak in drops when I do fail in words. Well spoke, my boy, and on thy father's side. My liege, how like you Don Horatio's spirit? What? Doth it promise fair? Aye. And no doubt his merit will purchase more. Knight Marshal, rise, and still rise, higher and greater in thy sovereign's eyes. Oh, fortunate hour, blessed minute, happy day, able to ravish even my sense away. Uh, now I remember too, oh, sweet remembrance, this day my year strike fifty, and in Rome they call the fifty year the year of jubilee. The merry year, the peaceful year, the jocund year. A year of joy, of pleasure and delight. This shall be my year of jubilee, for tis my fifty. Age ushers honour, tis no shame, confess. Beard, thou art fifty full, not a hair less. Enter an ambassador. How now? What news for Spain? Tribute returned? Tribute in words, my liege, but not in coin. Ha! Dare he still procrastinate with Spain? Not tribute paid? Not three years paid? It is not at his coin, but his slack homage, that we most repine. Uh, my liege, if my opinion might stand firm within your highness's thoughts. Marshal, our kingdom calls thee father, therefore speak free. Thy counsel I'll embrace, as I do thee. I thank your highness. Then, my gracious liege, I hold it meet by way of embassage to demand his mind and the neglect of tribute. But, my liege, here must be kind words, which doth oft besiege the ears of refuen tyrants more than blows. Oh, a politic speech beguiles the ears of foes. Uh, marry it, my liege, mistake me not, I pray, if friendly phrases, honeyed speech, bewitching accent, well-tuned melody, and all sweet gifts of nature cannot avail or win him to it, then let him raise his gall up to his tongue and be as bitter as physicians' drugs, stretch his mouth wider with big, swollen phrases. Oh, here's a lad of metal, stout Don Andrea, metal to the crown, which shake the king's high court three handfuls down. And well picked out, Knight Marshal. Speech well strung. I'd rather choose Horatio, were he not so young. I humbly thank your highness in placing me next unto his royal bosom. How stand ye, lords, to this election? Right, right pleasing, pleasing, our, pleasing our, our dread sovereign. sovereign yet. Only with pardon, mighty sovereign. I should have chosen Don Lorenzo. I, Don Rogero. Oh, no, not me, my lords. I am war's champion, and my fees are swords. Pray, King, pray, Piers, let it be Don Andrea. He is a worthy limb, loves wars and soldiers, therefore I love him. I love him and thee, valiant Rogero. Noble spirits, gallant bloods. You are no wise, insinuating lords. You have no tricks. You have none of all their slights. And just note that I'm briefly now playing a different character in the same court scene. <laughs> so, so, Andrea must be sent ambassador. Lorenzo is not thought upon. Good. 
I'll wake the court or startle out some blood. How stand you, lords, to this election? Right, right, right. Easy. Easy. Good. Good. Yes. Red Red Then, Don Andrea. My approved liege. We make thee our Lord High Ambassador. Your Highness circles me with honour's bounds. I shall discharge the weight of your command with best respect. If friendly tempered phrase cannot affect the virtue of your charge, I will be hard like thunder and as rough as northern tempests or the vexed bowels of two insulting waves who at one blow five merchants' wells into the deep doth throw. I'll threaten crimson wars. Aye, aye, that's good. Let them keep coin, pay tribute with their blood. Farewell then, Don Andrea, to thy charge. Lords, let us in. Joy shall now be our guest. Let in to celebrate our second feast. And exit all except for Lorenzo. I think we'll just pause here, even though we got a little speechette coming up. Um, as we have the court intrigues and I figure out whether there's a reason why I'm doubling two people who speak very, very close to each other. Um, thoughts about this sort of opening setting up? Because we have this sort of dumb show that opens, but is some of that just simply misplaced stage direction for stuff that is about to literally happen? Or is that actually a dumb show that that's how the play opens uh i'm i'm a little unsure uh I, their I, thoughts i got the feeling it was actually just almost a praise of that scene mm. rather but when, than stage direction well that that's the thing is, is 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 there a sort of mini mimed version of this before the action happens um uh rather than uh rather than it's just direction for what is about to happen um i think both are options well, they're pinning things on his chest, aren't they, and giving him his... Oh, oh hello. Are we getting some, somebody else's signal coming in? Hmm. Yeah. Don't know what that was. That's... There? Yeah, just, just some, some random talking somewhere. Just one second. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, while, while we're figuring out whether we're we're, we're hearing something from uh, in, in William's house, um... you're hearing the voices again. <laughs> we all are. It's the voices. It's the voices. <laughs> they speak to me. Um... <coughs> Sorry, busy at the ranch. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so that's a not, uh, that's a question mark. I I, I think um, I don't know what the room feels about that. But then also, what's happening in this opening scene? Thoughts, please. Hmm. Is it too early for people to have thoughts? Uh, well, it's either a court that is thoroughly united, or it is a court that is riven with policy and self-interest. And that's a director's choice. Yeah. Hmm. I think I'd go with the latter interpretation. <laughs> hmm. It's interesting, with the Re Lorenzo... Um, one of his speeches that seems to be an aside um mm. the so so andrea must be sent ambassador right. um and i'm wondering how many of these lines whether there's little asides in there that just aren't marked in this particular text um i say it hasn't i don't think it's had a, a vast amount of attention during its, its long life um so certainly some of the court i think is is united i think there are definitely minor factions breaking out um, is it a sort of um, slightly po pol politicking and, you know, people trying to work out what the what the alliances and factions are and who's going to be at the top and who's, you know, who who you need to be close to straight away sort of thing? Yeah, I think I think it is. Um, I mean, the, the the king seems relatively strong. Um, I, I, you know, it's not like we had with Tamerlane where we're 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 wondering which useless king is uh, is is going to get squished. Um, <laughs> It seems to be what's going on further down the pecking order. Um, mm. That seems to be what's but going on here. Also, the um, the dumb show at the beginning is that because they make a big point of you know giving him his sword and putting on his spurs. Is that not like a, a visual signal to the court to the audience rather yeah. that the court has changed in some way? Mm. You've got this man who's suddenly been elevated, mm. um, and so that does that involves a reshuffle presumably Reshuffle. politically exactly. yeah so everybody's having to kind of work out what their new position is relative to this newly honored 
councillor who's now a marshal and how does that change the, the the power structure so i guess it's just signaling to the audience that mm, everything's in flux mm. and then also he taking that position but then there's this discussion of what happens with other positions as well mm. and whose patronage has power within the the court again um because it's that discussion of who should who should who should be uh uh picked out um and you know Hieronimo makes his choice and then everybody else sort of piles in um also the value of you know someone's word versus someone's material worth some people all they need to give is their word and you know that's sort of a a mark of trust or it's got a certain weight to it and then you know other people it's only only their money is is going to um sort of get them any sort of status maybe I, th I think we shouldn't go too deep at this stage because we really don't know what's going on, uh, which is fine. Um, uh, that's absolutely fine. So the scene hasn't technically ended. I've got a lovely long speech to uh, to deliver. And then we'll rattle into the next scene with Horatio and Andrea and eventually Bell Imperia. So, Andrea's gone ambassador. Lorenzo is not dreamt on in this age. Hard fate when villains sit not in the highest state. Ambition's plumes that flourished in our court. Severe authority has dashed with justice and policy and pride walk like two exiles, giving attendance that were once attended. And we rejected that were once attended, uh, that were once high honoured. I hate Andrea, cause he aims at honor when my purest thoughts work in a pitchy veil, which are as different as heaven and hell. One peers for day, the other gapes for night. That yawning bell dam with her jetty skin, tis she I hug as mine effeminate bride, for such complexions best appease my pride. I have a lad in pickle of this stamp, a melancholy, discontented courtier, whose famished jaws look like the chap of death, upon whose eyebrows hangs damnation, whose hang hands are washed in rape and murders bold. Him with a golden bait I will allure, for courtiers will do anything for gold, to be Andrea's death at his return. He loves my sister, that shall cost his life. So she, a husband, he shall lose a wife. Oh, sweet, sweet policy, I hug thee good. Andrea's hymen's draft shall be in blood. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wasn't going to pause there, but I think we should just pause there. Is uh, he's gone? He's going full villain there, isn't he? Very. <laughs> uh, I mean, a slightly more subtle performance is, is available, um, <laughs> but, but, but much less fun. Yeah. yeah. But there's a real exposition point there as well. He's setting up the further uh, things that are going on. Uh, he's setting up his sister and Andrea and the further connections that are not uh, not really set up yet. So. Uh, setting up very much the next scene that, that is coming in. So it's quite neatly done, actually. I quite like that. Mm. Any, any a, brief thoughts on that? Helen? Yeah, it's a tremendous description of, of, of my character. Uh, and to be honest, I am not being typecast here. <laughs> Famished Jaws looking like the chap of death is not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, any other thoughts in the room before we move on? <laughs> well, I'm I'm still getting used to the language which is in here, and this voice of the author already. I mean, he's quite rhetorical. Mm. I mean, there's some really lovely writing happening. It, it feels like something that's from the from the later, like almost the Jacobean period. And yet, it's 1580s we're talking about right here. 
Well, not that's, necessarily. That's, that's the question. Is we don't know. <laughs> you know, it may have its roots in something from the 1580s, but it could very easily have been rewritten uh, right. extensively later. Or, or this section may may have been rewritten, but it may change later on. So keeping okay. our antennae up for um, okay. different language styles is a really good 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 point. I think at this stage. I mean, I love how quickly they just go. And here, let's just show that violence is going to happen. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's like, let's, let's just let our audience know that there will be blood because, yes. <laughs> this, is, this is the show you came to see, people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to be sure, there will be blood, there will be lots of blood. Yeah. Also, um, just a, a really strong good versus evil, heaven versus hell, like that's just set up so clearly. I am the darkness and he is the light and I will destroy him. Excellent. Let's see if that is undermined or, or, or reaffirmed as we go into the next scene. Enter Horatio at one door, Andrea at another. Whither in such haste, my second self? In faith, my dear bosom, to take solemn leave of a most weeping creature. That's a woman. Enter Bell Imperia. That's Bell Imperia. See, see, she meets you here. And what is it to love and be loved, dear? I have heard of your honour, gentle breast. I do not like it now so well, methinks. What? Not to have honour bestowed on me? Oh, yes, but not a wandering honour, dear. I could afford well didst thou stay here. Could honour melt itself into thy veins, and thou the fountain, I could wish it so, if thou wouldst remain here with me and not go. It is but to Portugal. But to demand the tribute, lady. Tribute? Alas, that Spain cannot of peace forbear a little coin, the Indies being so near. And yet this is not all. I know you are too hot, too full of spleen for an ambassador, and will lean much to honour. Ish. Nay, hear me, dear. I know you will be rough and violent, and Portugal hath a tempestuous sun stamped with the mark of fury, and you too. Sweet Belle Imperia. You meet like thunder, each imperious over other's spleen. You have both proud spirits, and both will strive to aspire. When two vexed clouds jostle, they strike up fire. And you, I fear me, war, which peace, uh, peace forfend. Oh dear, Andrea, pray, let's have no wars. First, let them pay the soldiers that were maimed in the last battle, ere more wretches fall, or walk on stilts to timeless funeral. Respective, dear, oh, my life's happiness, the joy of all my being do not shape frightful conceit beyond the intent of act i know thy love is vigilant o'er my blood and fears ill fate which heaven hath yet withstood but be of comfort sweet horatio knows i go to knit friends not to kindle foes true madam bell imperia that's his task the phrase he uses must be gently styled the king hath warned him to be smooth and mild. But will you, indeed, Andrea? By this. By this lip-blushing kiss. Oh, you swear sweetly. I'll keep your oath for you till you return. Then I'll be sure you shall not be forsworn. Enter oh, Pedringano, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Enter Pedringano. Ho, oh, Petrangano! Signor? Are all things aboard? They are, my good lord. Then, Bell Imperia, I take leave. Horatio be in my absence, my dear self, chaste self. <laughs> what? Playing the woman, Bell Imperia? Nay, then you love me not, or, at the least, you drown my honours in those flowing waters. Believe it. Bell Imperia, tis as common to weep at parting as to be a woman. <laughs> Love me more valiant. Play not this moist prize. Be woman in all parts, save in thy eyes. 
Mm -hmm. And so I leave thee. Farewell, my lord. Be mindful of my love and of your word. Tis fixed upon my heart. Adieu, soul's friend. All honour on Andrea's steps attend. Yet he is in sight, and yet but now he's vanished. Exit, Andrea. Nay, lady, if you stoop so much to passion, I'll call him back again. Oh, good, Horatio, no, it is for honour. Prithee, let him go. Then, madam, be composed as you were wont, to music and delight. The time being comic will seem short and pleasant till his return from Portugal. And, madam, in this circle, let your heart move. Honoured promotion is the sap of love. Exuant. Um, few really interesting things in that scene. I'm really getting that sense of the difference between Spain and Portugal coming up. I mean, obviously, the first scene was about that as well, but um, it sort of made, you know, clearly the rivalry is made a little bit more. And there's an awful lot of gendered language going on or discussion of women and men, uh, which... Um, uh, I have, as of yet, not established any any particular framework as to where that's going in this play. Um, but it does seem to be um, a consistent theme, actually. It seems to uh, have creeped up quite a few times in these these first few pages. Um, uh, and uh, and the relationships that are starting to to build here. Uh, thoughts in the room uh, from this little scene. Women weep. <laughs> A lot, apparently. Um, <laughs> it is, you might say, their defining feature. Mm. And says, and says the author, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we're, we're actually at the point when it was still not, there were still no females actually on stage. So these would have been boys' roles, wouldn't they? Uh, yes, almost certainly. Uh, at this this particular juncture, the 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 history of uh, female performances mm -hmm. is a little more complicated than that. But this time, yes, it's pretty much uh, that's that's pretty much the norm. Um, so I... yes, so we we we've got boys and 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 oh, young men and and men uh, doing these scenes. Uh, in, it, there's sort of that suggestion of a bit of bit of snogging possibly going on there. There's room for it. Um, um, and I love that line. Um, when Andrea leaves and Bell and Beria says, oh, yet he is in sight, oh, and yet, but now he's vanished. And it's like, that is just, yeah. that is so um, truthful. Like anyone who's ever been in a, in a long distance relationship, there's that thing of like, oh yeah, bye, bye, bye. Oh, he's gone, no, he's still there, bye, bye. Oh, no, you hang up, no, you hang up, no, you hang up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you hang up, you hang up. And it, I just, it really tickled me that, because I thought, oh yeah, that's been going on for centuries. <laughs> 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 yeah, nice little uh, truthful, truthful moment, quite comedic, really. Just yes, yeah, so I did write the stage direction exit has to be in the middle of that line, basically. It has to be happening <laughs> rather than afterwards. And the thing is, with all of these stage directions, they're probably one line out. Um, I haven't tried moving them about before we started. So the, uh, the, there's always that slight out of balanceness that we get. Um, uh, and I say, I'm hoping that this text is reasonably accurate. Uh, interpretation of what we've got it feels uh, i haven't noticed anything that's particularly jarring so far any other thoughts before we we move further into the plot uh, i'd say into the next i it's got no scene or act uh, uh numbers on this at all so i can't even say what the next scene is about scene three vaguely i think i'm making a note as i go um any thoughts before we move forward it's no. really clear this scene isn't it that's the only thing yeah, yeah. Hmm? Say again. It's really clear this scene. It's it's so clear on on what character does what, what they're feeling for each other. It's it's this just. I think that's, you know, why we don't really have anything to say because it's just really really clear in writing, which mm. is nice. Well, uh, it's the advantage of concision. This play is at least half the length of your average play um, of the time, so uh, it doesn't have time to go into a lengthy expositional um you know flights of fancy and metaphor and simile because uh, it's 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 moving straight to the next point that's a really good point uh okay i'm going to call this scene three enter lorenzo and lazarotto a discontented courtier so i think i'm reading one of these aren't i yes i'm lorenzo <clears throat> come my soul 
spaniel, my life's jetty substance. What's thy name? My name's an honest name, a courteous name. Tis Lazarotto. What? Lazarotto? Or rather rotting in this lazy age that yields me no employment. I have mischief within my breast more than my bulk can hold. I want a midwife to deliver it. I'll be the hue and then, and rid thee soon of this dull leaden and tormenting elf. Thou knowest the love betwixt Belimperia and Andrea's bosom. I do. How might I cross it, my sweet mischief? Honey damnation, how? Well, as many ways as there are paths to hell. And that's enough in faith. From usurer's door, there goes one path. From friars that nurse whores, there goes another path. From broker's stalls, from rich that die and build no hospitals, two other paths. From farmers that crack barns with stuffing corn, yet starve the needy swarms, another path. From drinking schools, one, from dicing houses, but from the court, none, none. Here is a slave, just of the stamp I wish, whose ink soars blacker than his names, though it stand printed with a raven's quill. But, uh, Lazarotto, uh, cross my sister's love, and I'll rain showers of ducats in thy path. Oh, ducats, dainty ducks, forgive me, ducats. I'll fetch you duck enough for gold, and chink makes the punk wanton and the board to wink. Discharge, discharge, good Lazarotto, how we may cross my sister's loving hopes. Nay, now I'll tell you. Thou knowest Andrea's gone ambassador. The better. There is opportunity. Now list to me. I will just pause here at this little bit of plotting. I'm liking this. This is fun. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> who is Lazarotto? Um, this is such fascinating, fascinating dialogue. Um, um, you could almost see him as Baldrick. <laughs> <laughs> really? You know, the, the all-purpose factotum for doing the nasty work. He thinks a bit faster than Baldrick. Yeah, I was mm. going to say, yeah, he's not as stupid as Baldrick is. Season one Baldrick. Yeah. Season yeah. one yeah. Baldrick, perfect. There you go. Yeah. He um, reminded me a bit of um, Ill Will. You know, he was like, he was yeah. like one of those um, personified but characteristics from a rap morality play. Mm. Yeah. Especially with that with that list of all the different ways you could get to hell, you know, you could get it this way, get it that way. I'm, I'm trying to remember which play we did that Ill Will was in. They, but... they, they, they tend to blow her into one during <laughs> interlude. Um, they... <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's a set piece speech, isn't it? It says mm. uh, they can do this, they can do this. It, uh, it feels the same sort of game, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, duck, it's mm. dainty ducks. You know, it's always right. fun. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Uh, okay, so they're continuing with the plotting, uh, but they are being overheard now. Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, enter yes. Hieronimo and Horatio, Horatio and overhear their talk. Alcario, the Duke Medina's son, dotes on your sister, Belle Imperia. Him in her private gallery you shall place to court her. Let his protestation be fashioned with rich jewels. For in love, great gifts and gold have best tongue to move. Let him not spare an oath without a jewel to bind it fast. Oh, I know women's hearts, what stuff they are made of, my lord. Gifts and giving will melt the chastest seeming female living. Indeed, Andrea is but poor, though honourable. His bounty among soldiers soaks him dry, and their oh, great gifts may bewitch her eye. Here's no fine villainy, no damned brother. But say, she should deny his gifts be all composed of hate, as my mind gives me that she will. What then? 
that thus, at his return to Spain, are murdered Don Andrea. Darest thou, spirit? What dares not he... This is a bugger, this line. What dares he not do that ne'er hopes to inherit? He dares be damned like thee. Dare I? Ha, ha. I have no hope of everlasting height. My souls are more. You know salvation's white. What dare I not enact then? Tush, he dies. I will make way to Bel Imperia's eyes. To weep, I fear, but not to tender love. Why? Is she not a woman? She must weep a while, as widows use till their first sleep, who on the morrow following will be sold to new before the first are thoroughly cold. So, Bel Imperia, for this is common. The more she weeps, the more she plays the woman. Come then, howe'er it hap, Andrea shall be crossed. Let me alone. I'll turn him to a ghost. Exuant Lorenzo and uh, Lazzarotto, and uh, remains Hieronimo and Horatio. Farewell, true brace of villains. Come hither, boy Horatio. Didst thou hear them? Oh, my true breasted father, my ears have sucked in poison, deadly poison. Murder, Andrea? Oh, inhuman practice. Had not your reverend years been present here, I should have poignarded the villain's bowels and shoved his soul out to damnation. Murder, Andrea? Honest lord, impious villains! I like thy true heart, boy. Thou lovest thy friend. It is the greatest argument and sign that I begot thee, for it shows thou art mine. Oh, father, tis a charitable deed to prevent those that would make virtue bleed. I'll dispatch letters to Don Andrea. Unfold their hellish practice, damned intent, against the virtuous rivers of his life. Murder, Andrea! Peace. Enter Isabella. Peace. Who comes here? Oh, news, news, Isabella. And Isabella is Gloria, who is muted. What news, Geronimo? Strange news. Lorenzo is become an honest man. Is this your wondrous news? Is it not wondrous to have honesty in hell? Go, tell it abroad now. But see you put no new additions to it, as thus, shall I tell you gossip, Lorenzo had become an honest man. Beware, beware, for honesty, spoken in derision, points out knavery. Oh, then take heed, that jest would not be trim. He's a great man, therefore we must not knave him. In gentle soul, I'll not be long away. As short as my body, short shall be my stay. Exit Isabella. Murder, Andrea? What blood-sucking slave could choke bright honour in a scabbard grave? Oh, what? Still harping upon Andrea's death? Oh, have courage, boy. I shall prevent their plots, make them both stand like two politic sots. Lorenzo has a reach as far as hell to hook the devil from his flaming cell. Oh, sprightly father, he'll outreach you then. Knaves no longer reaches have than honest men. But boy, fear not. I will outstretch them all. My mind's a giant, though my bulk be small. Exuant. Wow, some really interesting things here. Mm, right? Tonally, um, it feels a lot more bold and broad brushstrokes here. I mean, Horatio uh, and Hieronimo um, do not seem to quite be in the same play as everybody else. <laughs> um, they, it's they... like they're a comedy duo and Geronimo yeah. is a very short actor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I yeah. love yeah. yeah, I love that Horatio just keeps going, murder! And, and then after a mini scene act, he's still doing it. And it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like he's just paused like Dougal. <laughs> And then, you know, his cue is to come back in again. And then Isabella, who seems to be only there as a gossip, 
um, you know, that seems to be her function is to come in, spread some gossip. Not too much, though. Keep, keep the gossip small because you're a woman and therefore you, you will say too much, which again is not showing particularly great sexual politics from this text. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really weird. Um, it's interesting. Uh, we've had again, um, certainly with the modern production uh, producer's hat, the uh, line about my souls are more, you know, salvation's white, a line which, yeah, that's not, that's not staying. Um, and we have had some black and whiteness imagery uh, that's turned up, um, which uh, is, shall we say, problematic, mm. um, uh, but should be noted. Um, I, I, I think you ought to put a trigger warning right at the top of this one. Yeah. Beware sex, sexism and xenophobia. I think, to be fair, that's, that, that, that it's, it's, it's not like the session we had with the Yorkshire tragedy where we, we, we kind of need to set up considerably even more trigger warnings than with this. Um, uh, but you're right. There's a, um, not knowing the play in advance, I didn't quite know what, uh, what to warn people about um, as we went in. Additional thoughts. I've been talking a lot. I mean, it, the, there's certainly a lot more clarity in the language than the things we were working on last week. Mm. Um, you know, it reads much more modern, um, and yet it's from a not dissimilar period, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it depends. It depends on you know again where we think it lives, um, uh, and also who's it for as well. Um, the more, the more I hear it the more I'm thinking late rather than early. Mm. And this is just a feeling. Mm. What? It feels late. Yeah, William. I, I'm just thinking those, uh, those hellish couplets that he keeps throwing into Horatio the whole time. I mean, I mean, he's done nothing else. And, and he keeps on throwing these couplets in there, um, these rhyming couplets. And that seems to be an earlier ver uh, an earlier thing rather than a later thing. By that time, we're already getting into the chiasmus of, um, well, he must not be named. Um, but, uh, you know, so that's bringing me back in time with the, with the language on this one. Mm. Mm. Um. And the blank verse, it's, it's, well, it's funny, isn't it? Because it's, a lot of the time it's blank verse, but then it strays off into prose occasionally. Right? And then it's almost like he, he strays off into prose and then he's like, oh, we're getting to the end of the speech. Better throw in a couplet just to remind everybody that this is verse. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> and, and there's no sense in the longer speeches of end stopping the line. Mm, no. I, I mean, in fact, it's it's quite amazing how unend stop they are. Yeah, they are. It, it is. Imp yeah. imp I found it impossible to to read it to even indicate where the line ended because mm. it it would wreck the sense. I was having exactly the same with Lorenzo. I'm just it's just mm. flowing yes. one onto the other onto the other, right. and um, yeah. it's it's um, you know it feel it feels you know like. I mean, you're right in that sense. It feels very, very, very much later. Um, but again, we don't know. It could be a smash of the two. So or, or a deliberate tribute to the earlier parts. Um, uh, earlier styles of writing uh, might be uh, an element as well. Um, OK, shall we move forward into a scene that's probably too fiddly and complicated with people talking at the same time? It looks like it might be. I'm going to call it scene four for the sake of tidiness. Um, and we go to a different court. We're nipping off to Portugal. Um, so enter the King of Portugal, who's me, uh, Balthazar, Alexandro, Don Valupo, and others. Appeal of ordinance within, all together now, a great shout of people. Hooray! Hooray! What is the meaning of this loud report? An embassy, my lord, is new arrived from Spain. Son of Balthazar, we pray, do you go meet him and do him all the honour that belongs him. Father, my best endeavour shall obey you. Welcome, worthy lord, Spain's choice ambassador, brave, stout Andrea, for so I guess thee. So Andrea has entered at some point, probably earlier. Portugal's heir, I thank thee. Thou seems no less than what thou art, a prince and an heroic spirit. 
Portugal's king, I kiss my hand and tender on thy throne my master's love, peace, and affection. And we receive them in thee, worthy Andrea, thy master's high-prized love unto thy our heart is welcome to his friend, thou to our court. Thanks, Portugal. My lords, I had in charge at my depart from Spain this embassage. To put your breast in mind of tribute due unto our master's kingdom these three years detained and kept back. And I am sent to know whether neglect or will detains it so. Thus much return unto thy king, Andrea. We have with the best, adv we have with best advice uh, thought of our state and find it much dishonored by base homage. I not deny, but tribute hath been due to Spain by our forefathers' base captivity, yet cannot raise out their successor's merit. Tis said we shall not answer at next birth our father's faults in heaven. Why then on earth, which proves and shows that which they lost by base captivity, we may redeem with honoured valiancy. We borrow not, our kingdom is our own, He's a base king that pays rent for his throne. Is this thy answer, Portugal? Aye, Spain. A royal answer too, which I'll maintain. And all the, and peers, all the, the, peers, all the peers of Portugal, of Portugal alike. alike. Then thus all Spain, which but three minutes ago was thy full friend, is now returned thy foe. An excellent foe. We shall have scuffling good. Thou shalt pay tribute, Portugal, with blood. Tribute for tribute, then, and foes for foes. I bid you sudden wars. Aye, sudden blows, and that's as good as wars. Don, I'll not bait an inch of courage, nor a hair of fate. Pay tribute, I with strokes. Aye, with strokes you shall. Alas, that Spain should correct Portugal. Correct. Oh, in that one word, such torments do I feel that I could lash thy ribs with valiant steel. Prince Balthazar shall meet. Meet, Don Andrea? Yes, in the battle's bowels. Here is my gauge, a never failing pawn. Twill keep his day, his hour, nay minute twill. Then thine and this possess one quality. Oh, let them kiss. Did I not understand thee, noble, valiant, and worthy my sword society with thee? For all Spain's wealth, I'd not grasp hands. Meet Don Andrea, I tell thee, noble spirit. I'd wade up to the knees in blood. I'd make a bridge of Spanish carcasses to single thee out of the gaping army. Wert thou, prince, why even for that I love thee? Chut! Love me, man, when we have drunk hot blood together, wounds will tie an everlasting settled amity, and so shall thine. And thine. What? Give no place? To whom? To me. To thee? Why should my face that's placed above my mind fall under it? I'll make thee yield. Aye, when you get me down, but I stand even yet, jump, crown to crown. Darest thou? I dare. I am all vexed. I care not. I shall forget the law. Do, do. Shall I? Spare not. But thou wilt yield first. No. Oh, I had thee for it. The valiant of spirit ere trod the Spanish court. Here let the rising of our hot blood set. Uh, my liege, two nobler spirits never met. Until we meet in purple. When our sword shall... Agreed, right valiant prince. Then, Portugal, this is thy resolute answer. So, return, it's so. We have bethought us what tribute is, how poor that monarch shows, who for his throne a yearly pension owes. What our predecessors lost to Spain, we have fresh spirits that can renew it again. Then I unclasp the purple leaves of war. Many a new wound must gasp through an old scar. So, Portugal, I leave thee. Ourself in person will see thee safe aboard. Come, son, come, lords, instead of tribute, we must pay our swords. Remember, Don Andrea, that we meet. 
Up hither sailing in a crimson fleet. How to win friends and influence people. (laughs) (laughs) There's diplomacy for you. Um... They should have sent Ruggiero. Oh my God. (laughs) Should have sent anybody. Didn't go very well, did it? I mean, you know, yes, the King of Portugal basically just slapped you back in the face and said, no, we're not, we're not, this, this, this has been going on long enough. We're basically, this is, this, this is, this deal is, is not on anymore. And then they just square off and do they actually slap each other? It looks like there's a physical blow before we get to the official gauge bit. Um, and, and then they're, they're they hug it out it, at the end. They? Do they? Yeah. I mean, it's this weird thing. Like, I, I, I really yeah. like you. Because we can fight properly later. I mean, yeah. it's. <laughs> I love I, I, this scene. <laughs> I, I could almost see a situation where you've got a minor cur- courtier behind each of them, yeah. literally holding the back of their coat. <laughs> you know, you know, hold back, mate. He's not worth it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, William, I think you were going to say something. Uh, I, I, I just think it's ridiculous. I mean, Andrea makes absolutely no attempt at diplomacy. It's like, so that's your answer then, is it? Oh, all right. Yeah, well, we'll take you on, we you then. <laughs> it's, it, and then they get into this silly little match, which is like two schoolboys mm. uh, just uh, th- that were once friends and they're now ba- enemies. And what? <laughs> yeah, and the king does nothing. He just sort of lets them... Oh, let's go, right? Go, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah, see where this goes, see where this goes. It doesn't it doesn't sort of feel like the honorable soldier that Andrea's been set up to be. No. It doesn't Well, Bella Imperia did say though that he was like, you know, she was a bit worried about him going because oh you're very you're very warlike and you know you need to be calm. You shouldn't be going. Mm. And so like, yeah, she was right, wasn't she? Yeah, she, she <laughs> very much saw that coming, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Helen, do you have a thought there? Um Nothing that hasn't already been said. No. Um, there's, there's, um, it's just that way at the end that they sort of go, you know, I respect you for your forthright views. Let us kill each other later. <laughs> well, it's a bit like they're, they're setting up their duel, isn't it? It's like, I've just hit you mid- with my glove because I demand satisfaction, and, but in a really silly way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure this scene could be played you know not for love so I, I think there's there is a scene in it, it but it just the way it immediately leaps out at you as this this and it's wondering whether there's more of a scene around this whether there's some cuts have happened that have turned them all we're getting is the main action i um i think I, this is a spanish comedy i think <laughs> <laughs> honestly i think this is like you know we've got like oh this if, especially if it was written after you know it's like oh there's the spanish tragedy oh let's have a spanish comedy to go beforehand i think this is the like the light before the dark the the yeah honestly i do there, there are other hilarious. plays that do this so that's not that's that's reasonable tomorrow sorry oh i just yeah it, it does sound because there's thou i dare i'm all vexed well i cannot it's it's just it's i can't I can't see it be done in any way that's tragic as well. <laughs> I think Sarah's really mm. right. Mm. Okay, well, we're starting to build an opinion, um, which we perhaps were not expecting, which is uh, the whole point of these sessions. So, um, once again, I've de- demonstrated my doubling uh, skills is, is terrible because once again, I've given myself something to read when I'm trying not to give myself too much to read. Oh, well, never mind. Um, so, uh, it'll get better tomorrow. Uh, enter Lorenzo and Alcario, I think you decided. Do you affect my sister? Who's Alcario? Alan. I beg your pardon. Affect, above affectation, for her breast is my life's treasure. Oh, entire is the condition of my hot desire. Then this must be your plot. You know Andrea's gone, ambassador, on whom my sister Bel Imperia casts her affection. You are in stature like him, speech alike, and had you but his vestment on your back, there's no one living but would swear to a he. Therefore, sly policy must be your guide. I have a suit just of Andrea's colours, proportioned in all parts. Nay, twas his own. This suit within my closet shall you wear, and so disguised woo, sue, and then at last... What? 
obtain thy love. This falls out rare in this disguise. I may, may both wed, bed, and border. You may, you may. Besides, uh, within these few days, he'll return. Till this be acted, I in passion burn. All falls out for the purpose. All hits jump. The date of his embassage, nigh expired, gives strength unto our plot. True, true. All's the purpose. Moreover, I will buzz Andrea's landing, which once but crept into the vulgar mouths is hurried here and there, and sworn for truth. Think, tis your love makes me create disguise, and willing hope to see your virtue rise. Lorenzo's bounty I do more in fold than the greatest mine of India's brightest gold. Come, let us in, and next time you shall show all Don Andrea, not Alcario. I don't know. Do I prefer this plot? This plot I'm liking. As, as a, as a, it's, it's, I mean, it's all fun. I think it's all fun. Yeah. Um, have we got a double here? Andrea and Alcario. Well, that's the question. Is it is it a literal double, or are they um, played by different actors? Um, they've got to look similar. I mean, there is there is the possibility of a double, isn't there? Just, just. Well, we'll if we'll, you have we'll, a, if you have a substitute for the corpse, hmm. if you do. I mean, yeah. sorry, I'm getting ahead. Yeah. No. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Someone's going to die, people. <laughs> Wait, the, <what>? the, <laughs> the other thing is that Lorenzo, correct me if I'm wrong, is Bell Imperia's brother. Mm -hmm. He is a swine. He's, he's awful. Oh, yeah. He's terrible. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, he is more of a swine than in the previous scene. But he does say at the beginning, I mean, that's one of the things he says about himself is, I'm a total bastard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's he. he about he's, that. I mean, I think it came clear to me from his first sequence that he's the one who's actually been bounced out of what was presumably a fairly lucrative office. Mm. Um, and he's doing his damnedest to make sure that he uh, maintains as much of the perks and uh, rewards as he can. Well, it's, it's, it's insult to injury as well, because, you know, not only is he being replaced by, effectively replaced by Andrea, but he's also, he's, he's, he's trying to marry his sister. He's just going, I'm not having either of those things. Two birds with one stone. We have that in other plays. Um, it's all a bit Uther Pendragon, isn't it? It's, it is a little <laughs> bit, yeah. It's all a bit like, yeah, pretending to be the, or... No, I mean, she is actually married to Uther, though, isn't she? But like, mm. um, but it is all a bit like, oh, yes, I'll just pretend to be the man she loves and have my wicked way. That's that's a plot we've definitely seen before. Well, that that that's standard plot number three A, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it turns up a lot. Um, it's trick. a more advanced version, though, isn't it? Sorry, yeah. Helen. No, I just said it's it's often called the bed trick. Mm, yes, and yeah. it's sort of, well, it's it's not just the bed trick; it's the wed bed and border trick. Um, <laughs> wed bed know, and the, board, I love that. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of ooh, icky. Um, Tamara, any additional thoughts you have? Or I've talked over you a bit. No, no, nothing that hasn't been said. Okay. I think we're all very much in agreement so far, so that's uh, clarity. Clarity. Okay, next scene uh, with Hieronimo and Horatio, that fabulous double act. <clears throat> it's quite a fast-paced one, people. Let's see how this goes. Um, so um, uh, I'm calling this scene six, I think, if I've got my sequence right. Enter Ger Hieronimo, trussing of his points. No sniggering at the back there. Horatio with pen and ink. I'll pull the table this way. So, tis well. Come right, Horatio, right. This speedy letter must away tonight. Horatio folds the paper the contrary way. What? Fold paper that way to a nobleman? To Don Andrea, Spain's ambassador? Fie! I am ashamed to see it. Hast thou worn gowns in the university, tossed logic, sucked philosophy, ate cues, drunk seas, and cannot give a letter to the right courtier's crest? Oh, there's a kind of state in everything, save in a cuckold's pit. Fie, fie, Horatio! What? Is your pen foul? No, father. Cleaner than Lorenzo's soul that's dipped in ink made of an envious gall, 
else had my pen no cause to write at all. Signor Andrea, say. Signor Andrea. Tis a villainous age, this. Tis a villainous age, this. That a nobleman should be a knave as well as an ostler. That a nobleman should be a knave as well as an ostler. Or a sergeant. Or a sergeant. Or a broker. Or a broker. Yet I speak not this of Lorenzo, for he's an honest lord. Swat, father, I'll not write him honest lord. Take up thy pen, or I'll take up thee. What? Write him honest lord? I'll not agree. You'll take it up, sir? Well, well. Before, thou hast put me out, beshrew thy impudence or insolence. Lorenzo's an honest lord. Well, well, sir, and has hired one to murder you. Oh, I cry you mercy, father, meant you so? Art thou a scholar, Don Horatio, and canst not aim at figurative speech? I pray you pardon me, t'was but youth's hasty error. <sighs> Come, read then. And has hired one to murder you. He means to send you to heaven when you return from Portugal. From Portugal? Yet he's an honest duke's son. Yet he's an... But not the honest son of a duke. But not the honest... Oh, that villainy should be found in the great chamber. Oh, that villainy. And honesty in the bottom of a cellar. And honesty... If you'll be murdered, you may. If you'll be... If you be not, thank God and Hieronimo. If you be not... If you be, thank the devil and Lorenzo. If you be, thank... Thus hoping you will not be murdered, and you can choose. Thus hoping you will... Especially being warned beforehand. Especially... I take my leave. Boy Horatio, right leave bending in the hams like an old courtier. Thy assured friend, say, against Lorenzo and the devil, little Hieronimo Marshall. Hieronimo Marshall. So, now read it over. Signor Andrea, tis a villainous age, this, that a nobleman should be a knave as well as an ostler, or a sergeant, or a broker. Yet I speak not this of Lorenzo. He's an honest lord, and has hired one to murder you when you return from Portugal. Yet, he's an honest duke's son, but not the honest son of a duke. Oh, that villainy should be found in the great chamber and honesty in the bottom of the cellar. True boy, there's a moral in that. As much to say knavery in the court and honesty in a cheese house. If you'll be murdered, you may. If you be not, thank God and Hieronimo. If you be, Thank the devil and Lorenzo, thus hoping you will not be murdered and you can choose. Especially being warned beforehand. I take my leave. Horatio, hast thou written leave bending in the hams enough like a gentleman usher? Oh, foot! No, Horatio, thou hast made him straddle too much like a Frenchman. For shame, put his legs closer, though it be painful. So, so tis done, tis done. Thy assured friend against Lorenzo and the devil, little... Hieronimo Marshall. Okay, we have to pause there. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I said it wasn't Hieronimo. It, it was Hieronimo. It's not. It's clearly Geronimo. That's, that's the correct name for this character. This, this is pure broker's men. Panto stuff. Uh, I mean, it's, they even come on carrying the table going up your end. <laughs> I, mean, I especially love hoping you will not be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> this is a brilliant scene. I mean, yeah. it's fantastic. It's totally what this play is, God only knows, but this is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's all very restoration comedy, isn't it? It's like it's prefiguring yeah. stuff that's not going to be for another hundred years. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, in fact, where we got the line, Horatio's lines, which end with a long dash, mm. are in fact where Hieronimo is actually speaking over him. Yeah, I, I, how this pace is uh, in performance would be very different. And of course, there's big writing yeah. action to be done here. Right. And every so often the arm yeah. just collapses and it's yeah. just, you know. Mm. Ah. I, I, I could see Horatio with his tongue slightly sticking out as he tries to concentrate on his writing. Mm. 
I mean, it's, how it's old is thought. Horatio? Yeah. Well, I think I think <laughs> on context, you because there's mention of him having studied. I would have thought he's going to be. Should we play this? What late teens? Yeah, he's he's so a schoolboy. He's not a young man. Um, mm. um, the way this is this is paced, I I love that scene. I love that scene. That's fantastic. <laughs> and I, I'm sure there's a background story that we're not familiar with, which is the leaf bending in the hams like an old courtier. Yeah, that's um, that's. A... It, it's almost like finishing the thing off with a sketch rather than a signature. Yeah. Um... I, yeah, I think there must be something to do with uh, something to do with uh, letter writing that we're not we're not familiar with. That's a perfect two end sketch though that I could throw into one of our live shows. I mean, mm. that's so going in. Um, I've, I'm having that. I'm having that. Um, scene's um, not over, by the way, people. Uh, <laughs> just one thing. Um, yes. I I read this through this morning, um, and to be honest, it was this scene that made me choose my characterisation for. <laughs> Hieronimo, <laughs> um, the way I did it. Um, but when it got to that stage direction about trusting of his points, and I'm thinking, what does that mean? So I looked it up, and, appar and apparently um, the points, so I've read on Google, well, via Google, it, I could, it could be wrong, um, they were the ties that attached a gentleman's, um, they were underneath the doublet, the end of the doublet, and they attached to his the top of his britches to stop any unseemly gappage mm. between the two. So, so he's that's what he's doing. He's he's ho he's got his doublet hoisted up and he's tying tying them onto his britches as he comes in, which I just thought was even more brilliant. I just thought that was fantastic. Yeah. So, so effect effectively brace braces in UK usage or suspenders in American usage, yeah. or in uh, uh, un, uh, around the horn language, uh, trussing up his groats. Um, <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, enough spoon uh, thringing from you, sir. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. I think let's finish the scene before we say any more. I think we've we 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 love this. This is great. Um, but the scene takes perhaps a different turn as uh, enter <laughs> Lorenzo and Isabella. Who's Isabella? Gloria. Who's Who's muted. Muted. Sorry, I keep muting myself. Yonder he is, my lord. Pray you speak to him. Wax, wax, Horatio. I need wax too. Our foes will stride else over me and you. He's writing a love letter to some Spanish lady, and now he calls for wax to seal it. God uh, save you, good knight marshal. Who's this? My lord Lorenzo? Welcome! Welcome! <laughs> You're the last man I thought on, save the devil. Much doth your grace, much doth your presence grace our hum homely roof. Oh, Hieronimo, your wife condemns you of an uncourtesy and overpassing wrong, and more she names love letters which you send to Spanish dames. Do you accuse me so, kind Isabella? Unkind Geronimo. And for my instance, this in your hand is one. In sooth, my lord, there is no written name of any lady, nor no Spanish dame. If it were not so, you would not be afeard to read or show the waxed letter. Uh, pray you, uh, let me behold it. <laughs> I pray you pardon me. I must confess, my lord, it treats of love. Love to Andrea, aye, even to his very bosom. What news, my lord, hear you from Portugal? Why, before your grace it must not be. The badger feeds not till the lion's served. Nor fits it news so soon kiss subjects' ears as the fair cheek of the high authority. Hieronimo lives much absent from the court, and being absent there, lives from report. Farewell, Hieronimo. Welcome, my lord Lorenzo. And exuant Lorenzo and Isabella. Boy, my mother's jealous of my love to her. Oh, she played us a wise part. Now ten to one he had not overheard the letter read just as he entered. Though it had happened evil, he should have heard his name yoked with the devil. Here, seal the letter with a loving knot. Send it with speed, Horatio. Linger not. The Don Andrea may prevent his death and know his enemy by his envious breath. 
Okay, so the scene ends with this sort of random hide the letter game. Why Lorenzo and Isabella are together is beyond <laughs> right? me. Mm-hmm. William, oh, do you she... have... Sorry, uh, who... who, who... W- w- wave if you wish to speak, sorry. Uh, Sarah, go. I, I, I thought it was just that, like, Lorenzo's popped around to see him and uh, Isabella's, like, she's basically doing the job of a servant. She's saying, oh... Uh, you know, she's presenting him like, and I, is she not giving him a nudge like, oh, look, Lorenzo's here. And that's why she says, oh, yes, he's writing letters to to other women because she knows what he's doing. And ah. so she's like, oh, I didn't get that. Yeah, no, I think that's, or, uh, that's a good call. Yeah, that makes sense. Though. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, she's she's kind of more clever than her husband, isn't she? I mean, I'm getting that distinct impression. I think anybody's more clever than him. Because <laughs> it is that hide the letter game. Mm. Oh, it's not really a, a thing against you. Um, mm. And of course, the one to go on the mug uh, is definitely the badger feeds not till the lion's the... served. Oh, I think that's, um, what a line! That's <laughs> what. <laughs> that's presumably based on something that's got mangled somewhere, of which I know not. Um, Fascinating. Um, <laughs> fascinating. We could we could get bogged down on this for too long, so I think we should move rapidly forward, people. Oh God, it's me again. Okay. <laughs> so sorry, everyone. I'm really not supposed to be reading this much. Um, okay. Next scene. Enter Lorenzo and Alcario, descri- disguised like Andrea. Now, by the honour of Castile's true house, you are as like Andrea, part for part, as he is like himself. I did not know you by my cross. I swear I could not think you, but Andrea's self, so legged, so face, so speeched, so all in all, methinks I should salute your quick return and speedy haste from Portugal. Welcome, fair lord, worthy ambassador, brave Don Andrea. Oh, I laugh to see how you shall jest at her mistaking thee. <laughs> what? Have you given it out that Andrea is returned? It's all about the court in every ear in my invention brought me to uh, for news last night at supper, and which the more to cover, I took a bowl and quaffed a health to him, when it would scarce go down for extreme laughter to think how sports, how soon report had scattered it. <laughs> but is the villain Lazzarotto acquainted with our drift? Not for Spain's wealth. Though he be secret, yet suspects the worst for confidence confounds the stratagem. The fewer in a plot of jealousy build a foundation surest when multitudes make it confused ere it come to head. Be secret, then. Trust not the open air, for air is breath, and breath-blown words raise care. <clears throat> this is the gallery where she most frequents. Within this walk have I beheld her daily, with my shaped substance. O immortal powers, lend your assistance. Clap a silver tongue within this palate, that when I approach within the presence of this demigoddess, I may possess an adamantic power, and so bewitch her with my honeyed speech. Have every syllable a music stop, that when I pause the melody may move and hem persuasion between her snowy paps, that her heart hearing may relent and yield. Break off, my lord, see where she makes approach. At which point enter Bel Imperium. Then fall into your formal vein of terms. <clears throat> welcome, my lord, welcome, brave Don Andrea. Spain's best of spirit, what news from Portugal? Tribute or war? Oh, but see. My sister Bel Imperia comes. I will defer it to some other time, for company hinders love's conference. Exit, exit, exit. Welcome, my live self form, dear Don Andrea. My words iterated give thee as much. Welcome, myself of self. What news, Andrea? Treats it peace or war? At first they cried all war, as men resolved to lose both life and honour at one cast, at which I thundered words all clad in proof, which struck struck amazement to their pallid speech, and tribute presently was yielded up. But, Madam, Bel Imperia, leave we this, and talk of former suits and quests of love. They whisper, 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 enter Lazarotto. 
Tis all about the court. <clears throat> Andreas come. Would I might greet him. I wonder much my Lord Lorenzo is so slack in murder not to afford me notice all this while. Gold, I am true. I had my hire, and thou shalt have thy due. Was possible to miss him? So, soft, soft. This gallery leads to Bell Imperia's lodging. There he is sure, or will be sure. I'll stay. The evening too begins to slubber day. Sweet opportuneful season, here I'll lean like a court hound that licks fat trenchers clean. But has the king partook your embassy? That till tomorrow shall be now deferred. Nay, then you love me not. Let that be first dispatched, till when receive this token. She kisses him, exit Belimperia. I to the king, with this unfaithful heart, it must not be, I play too false a part. Up, Lazzarotto, yonder comes thy prize. Now lives Andrea, now Andrea dies. Lazzarotto kills him. That villain Lazzarotto has killed me instead of Andrea. Okay, just pause there. Um... <laughs> That really should not be so funny. <laughs> no. that, now, we're, we're all familiar with early modern people saying, oh, I die. Uh, oh, oh, I die, I die. I, I die. die, I die, etc. The 17 um, verses. <laughs> yeah. It, I think what's funny about it is not that that villain, Lazzarotto, has killed me. That's sort of fine. It's the fact instead, instead of, of Andrea. Andrea. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. like, ah, oh, I understand the plot device. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> <So funny. laughs> Just in case you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's suggest it could be the same actor actually playing both. He's just reminding the audience <laughs> instead of Andrea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. It looks like he's not dead yet. No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. It's, yes. it's about to get 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 more tragic. Um, I think is the term, possibly. <laughs> Okay, let's let's plow on. Enter Andrea and and and, and Roger. No, they can't be doubled. They really can't, can they? No, that's such a shame. That's um, true. No, and, that's uh, true. And no, Rogero, who's who's me again, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. And others. Welcome home, Lord Ambassador. Ow! 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 Whose groan was that? What frightful villains! This his sword unsheathed. Whom hast thou murdered, slave? Why don't don't. Andrea? No counterfeiting villain. He says, my lord, that he hath murdered me. I, Don Andrea, or else Don the devil. Lay hands on him, some rear up the bleeding body to the light. My lord, I think tis you. Were you not here, that a, a man might swear to a you. His garments, ha! Huh, like mine, his face made like. An ominous horror all my veins doth strike. Sure, this portends my death. This misery aims at some fatal pointed tragedy. Enter Hieronimo and Horatio. <gasps> Son Horatio, see, Andrea slain. Andrea slain, then weapon cling my breast. Live, truest friend, forever loved and blessed. Lives, Don Andrea? Aye, but slain in thought to see so strange a likeness forged and wrought. Lords, cannot you yet descry who is the owner of this red melting body? My lord, it is Alcario, uh, Duke Medina's son. Uh, I know him by this mole upon his breast. Alcario, Alcario slain. Hast thou beguiled me sword? Arm, thou hast slain thy bountiful kind lord. Why then rot off and drop upon the ground? Strew all the galleries with gobbets round. Enter Lorenzo, not to confuse anyone. 
Who names Alcario slain? It is Alcario. Oh, cursed deed. Couldst thou not see, but make the wrong man bleed? It was your fault, my lord. You brought no word. Ah, oh, peace. No words. I'll get my pardon. Why, mum, then. Enter Bell Imperia. Who names Andrea slain? Oh, tis Andrea. Oh, I swoon. I die. Now, uh, look, look to my sister, Bell Imperia. Raise up, my dear love, Bell Imperia. Oh, be of comfort, sweet. Call in thy spirits. Andrea lives. Oh, let not death beguile thee. Are you Andrea? Do not forget that was Alcario, my shape's counterfeit. Why speaks not this accursed, damned villain? Hmm? Oh, good words, Lord, my, for these are courteous veils. The, the king must hear. Why, why should I make two tales for to be found in two? Before the king, I will resolve you all this strange, strange thing. I hit, yet missed. Twas I mistook my part. I, villain, for thou aimst at this true heart. Horatio, twas well as fortune stands, this letter came not to Andrea's hands. Twas happiness indeed. Was it not you, Andrea, questioned me about love? No, Bell Imperia, belike t'was false Andrea. For the first time object mine eyes met, for the first object mine eyes met, was that most accursed, which I much fear me by all signs, portends, most doubtful, oh, wow, that's a long sentence, hang on. <laughs> for the first object mine eyes met, was that most accursed, which I much fear me by all signs, portends most doubtful wars and dangerous pointed ends to light upon my blood. Angels of heaven forfend it. Some take up the body, others take charge of that accursed villain. My lord, uh, leave me that to me. I'll, I'll look to him. Mark, Mark Horatio, a villain, guard a villain. The king may think my news is a bad guest, when the first object is a bleeding breast. So ends uh, that that tragic and lamentable scene. Um... How the hell do you play this other than as comedy? I think it's got to be. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's total burlesque, isn't it? Um, yeah. It's total burlesque. Um, it's. Um, yeah, it's the fact that people just keep coming in and going, Oh, Andrea's dead. No, he's not. Ah. Oh, hello. No, I'm not dead. I'm, I'm right here. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> he's behind you. Um, and you've got, you know, Geronimo and Horatio doing their, ah, look, look, doing these little asides. You know, going, ah. Um, yeah. This is such a fascinating text. I love the line, red melting something. Oh, yeah, yeah. what's that yeah, about? That was so icky, yeah. I, you know, I think that's almost actually about the act, the dying actor, because there's no indication of when he actually dies of him just overacting, just going, ah! Just <laughs> drawn out. <laughs> melting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, to pieces. I, I, I have to say, um, regardless of what originally this text may have been if we ever produce this it's got to be as basically the follow-on from you've seen the the spanish tragedy now here's the comedy version i think it's got to be that way around i don't think you can watch this then the spanish tragedy because no. I, no, I, yeah. I think it would kill it stone dead um it, it would be a bit of a downer <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, in, in some ways it's reminding me of the um the theatrical company, the reduced <clears throat> company, um, you know, and, and the way they messed around with certain well-known pieces. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, th th there is a, 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 a two-part play that John Marston wrote, um, so uh, Antonio Melida and Antonio's Revenge, and the first one mm. is explicitly a comedy, and the second one is, is, is a much darker revenge, but they're both tonally playing around up and down all the way through. Um, Whereas this just, it, it, it feels very half-hearted in any serious areas of the plot. 
um, you know, even serious embassies turn into a comedy fight. Mm. Mm. Um, so yeah, that seems totally where it is, where it's at. It'll be interesting to see, because am I right in thinking this is supposedly a prequel? to what then comes oh, yeah, later. This, this is, action-wise, this oh, is all, this is... most of this is leading up to events in the Spanish tragedy. There is a reason why we're doing this before the Spanish tragedy. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see if the tone changes later I, on in I, the play. I, I don't think it's going to be spoiling anything to say, yes. <laughs> right, okay. I haven't read ahead, so I'm... No. <laughs> I think the term Spanish tragedy is a very good clue as to tonally the difference in text. But before, um, before the end of this play, though, I'm, what's, what I'm wondering if there's going to be a change in tone before we get... Very to possibly, end. very possibly. Yeah. The end of the text may, may match very well, because uh, it has, Ooh. I believe, been used in productions of the Spanish tragedy. Bits of the very end oh, of this has been used. Right, OK. Um, yeah. And I think that's probably the best way to do it if you are going to nick any material. Um, anyway. Another scene occurs where the King of Spain returns, and I suspect this might be a, a tricksy one. There might be some interesting doubling or uh, suddenly being different people, even though you're already on stage. Let's see how this goes. Enter the King of Spain, Castile, Medina, Rogero, and others. A dead march within. My lords, what heavy sounds are these? Nearer and nearer. Ha! Andrea, the four are out of these news? Nay, then I fear Spain's inevitable ill. Ha! Ah, Andrea, speak! What news from Portugal? What? Is the tribute paid? Or peace or wars? Muted. Wars, my dread liege. Why then? That bleeding object doth presage what shall hereafter follow. What's he that lies there slain, or hurt, or both? Speak. My liege Alcario, Duke Medina's son, and by that slave this purple act was done. Who names Alcario slain? Ah, me! Tis he! Art thou that villain? How didst thou know me name? I see an excellent villain hath his fame, as well as a great courtier. Speak, Speak villain. villain. Wherefore didst thou this accursed deed? Because I was an ass, a villainous ass. For I had hit, had I hit it right, Andrea had lain there. He walked upright. This ominous mistake, this damn there are, Breedeth in my soul an everlasting terror. Say, slave, how came this accursed evil? Faith, by myself, my short sword and the devil. To tell you all, without a tedious tongue, I'll cut them down, my words shall not hang long. That help, hapless, bleeding lord, Alcario, which this hand slew, Poxant, was a huge doter on Bel Imperia's beauty, who replied in scorn, and his hot suit denied, for her affections were all firmly planted in Don Andrea's bosom. Yet, unwise, he still pursued it with blind lover's eyes. Then hired he me with gold, O oh, fate, thou elf, to kill Andrea, which here killed himself. For not content to stay the time of murder, he took Andrea's shape unknown to me, and in all parts disguised, as there you see, intending, as it seemed by that sly shift, to steal away her troth. Short tale to tell, I took him for Andrea. Down he fell. O oh, impious deed, to make the air of honour melt and bleed. Bear him away to execution. Nay, Lord Lorenzo, where's the pardon? Sfut our peach else. Oh, um, uh, peace, Lazaretto. I'll get it off the king. Do it quickly then, or I'll spread villainy. Uh, uh, um, uh, my, my lord, he is the most notorious rogue that ever breathed. Away with him. Your, your 
Highness may do well to bar his speech, tis able to infect a virtuous ear. Away with him. I will not hear him speak. My lord, Lorenzo is up. And they stop his mouth and bear him out. Oh, is not this a monstrous courtier? He is the court toad, father. Tribute denied us. Ha! It is, my liege, and that with no mean words. He will redeem his honour lost with swords. So daring. Ha! So peremptory. Can you remember the words he spake? Word for word, my gracious sovereign, and these were they. Thus much, return to Spain. Say that our settled judgment hath advised us what tribute is, how poor that monarch shows, who for his throne a yearly pension owes, and what our predecessors lost to Spain. We have fresh spirits that can renew it again. Ha! So peremptory, daring, stout. Then, my liege, according to your gracious dread command, I bade defiance with a vengeful hand. He entertained it? Ay, and returned it with menacing brows. Prince Balthazar, his son, grew violent and wished the fight begun. So the exit of uh, Lazzarotto, uh, Lorenzo obviously was helping with that. Um, and I re-enter with a, so, so, I have sent my slave to hell. Though he blab there, the devils will not tell. <laughs> Now, now, <clears throat> what means this trumpet sound? Enter a messenger. My liege, the Portugals are up in arms, glittering in steel. Where's our Lord General, Lorenzo, Stout Andrea, with whom I rank sprightly Horatio? What, for shame, shall the Portugals trample the fields before you? And I haven't actually allotted a general. Someone no, my up. liege. There's time enough to let out blood enough. Tribute shall flow out of their bowels and be tended so. Farewell, brave lords. My wishes are bequeathed. A noble rank of spirits never breathed. Exuant king and nobles. No, my sweet boy. Heaven shield thee still from care. Oh, be as fortunate as thou art fair. And heaven bless you, my father, in this fight, that I may see your grey head crowned in white. And we'll just pause there. I've noted that we close the session here. I actually kind of want to just do the next very brief scene uh, while we're here. But before we do that, any, any thoughts on that particular bit of um, comedy tie, tidying up there? La uh, Lazzarotto creating his own own doom there uh quite nicely of, uh, oh he he orchestrated his own murder honest gov honest gov um <laughs> he's a cad yeah. and the band play believe he, he like. start he starts off explaining to everybody what everybody already knows and then very subtly moves into something that blaming the dead for everything that's gone before Hmm. Yes, it's uh, it's clearly what I cooked up as the, the 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 story that we're going to tell, and you're hoping that I'm gonna I'm gonna find a way of getting you off. Yes, um, which well, I don't I do. <laughs> yeah, because you're treacherous. Yeah, I I think I think maybe the story was cooked up, but I think um, it, effectively he Lazzarotto was uh, doomed from the point that he was caught. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I was never going to say that. You know, there's going to be betrayal whichever way about. Hmm. I, I, I must say, reading it, I got the impression that um, Lazzarotto was having to think on his feet. Because there's an, there are an awful lot of lines that go absolutely nowhere. Mm. Where he's <laughs> trying to say something and then stops and starts again. Oh, so maybe there's a tension there between you and me as you're looking to me and I'm looking at you going, where are we going with this? Maybe we haven't had a chance to get our story straight. That might be. Well, neither yeah. of us anticipated this. No. <laughs> I mean, we, I, don't th I don't think Lorenzo was intending that this should happen. Mm. Or was he? Uh, I mean, he, he's very quick to throw Laz under the carriage, isn't he? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's the obvious thing to do from his point of view. 
Yeah, stop it. Stop him talking, my lord. That's the best yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because his words can infect people's loyalty, mm. which is a nice, mm. nice mm. thought. Yes, like that's a, re- it's a good line, isn't it? You know, to infect a virtuous ear. That's a really, really effective line. Um, it's full of great lines. It's just tonally with with. Um, in diff- different universes um and of course then the, the war the war has invaded the space oh. and we've just got this short scene i want to do before i close the session and we go into extra time so we just have a scene here with enter andrea and bell imperia you came but now and must you part again you told me that your spirit should put on peace but see war follows war Nay, sweet love, cease to be denied our honour. Why, twere base to breathe and live. And war in such a case is even as necessary as our blood. Swords are in season then, when rights withstood. Deny us tribute that so many years we have in peace told out. Why, it would raise spleen in the host of angels. Were enough to make our tranquil saints of angry stuff. You have all wrought the chiding of my breast, and by that argument you firmly prove honour to soar above the pitch of love. Lend me thy loving and thy warlike arm, on which I knit the soft and silken charm, tied with an amorous knot. Oh, may it prove enchanted armour, being charmed by love that when it mounts up to thy warlike crest, it may put by the sword and so be blessed. Oh, what divinity proceeds from love, what happier fortune than myself can move. Hark, the drum beckons me, sweet dear, farewell. This scarf shall be my charm against foes and hell. Oh, let me kiss thee first. The drum again. Hath that more power than I? Do it quickly then. Farewell. Exit Andrea. Farewell, O cruel part. Andrea's bosom bears away my heart. And I mean, that scene feels quite different. I I Mm. don't know if that the room agrees or not. Um, there, There is actually quite a touching scene here. Now that war has appeared. And that's sort of why I wanted to do this scene before we went into the next session as a sort of potential pivot i don't know Mm, i could be wrong here but we were talking about whether it goes uh, sarah uh, asked that question earlier um you know whether we go somewhere a bit uh darker and whether the play can pivot and this is such a you know the the love tokens the charm the scarf these these things may or may not be important later um and I, I want to stop there any thoughts on this scene or in fact anything because we're now into extra time general thoughts of the first two thirds three quarters of the play i would love to watch it yeah, yeah. me too yeah, yeah. with danny I... devito playing Hieronimo. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and who would be horatio <laughs> someone really uh, tall and thin someone yeah tall and thin. Then, yeah <laughs> It's Rodney and Delboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can well be. <laughs> this time, this time, this this act in the Spanish tragedy will be duck it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it is that thing, you know. It is well written. It's not that we're laughing because this is badly. Written. This is clearly the effect the author is looking to, yeah. or authors um, are looking to produce. Um, and I'm not detecting an awful lot here that feels like it's from an original serious play. I mean, there might be bits, um, but it does feel like this is a deliberate fun thing on, on the plot lines. Uh, yeah. I could be wrong there. Um, anyone feel that there's, I mean, that scene is lovely, but it's not necessarily out of tone, out of step with the rest of the play so far. Uh, we've had moments that are quite, the, some of the love stuff's really good. Um, you know, that, that stay, stay, stay. Oh, he's gone. Um, and all of those little bits. Um, thoughts in the room? I mean, the whole thing feels to me like pastiche. Mm. Yeah. 
or yeah. or rearrange the sounds slightly. Mm. I mean, was a Spanish tragedy? I, sorry, my knowledge is um, very ignorant in comparison to everyone else in this room, probably. But like, was a Spanish tragedy a big hit? Mm. Massive. Big, well, then I can Huge. absolutely imagine somebody um, because when did Kid die? Uh, early 90s. Yeah. Okay. I can absolutely imagine if this is a bit later, I can imagine someone along coming, someone coming along later on and going, you know what? I need a bit of cash. Um, that's a really popular play. I'm just going to write a prequel and make it funny because mm. people like funny and people like that play. So I'm just going to do something with that because I need to pay my rent. Because mm -hmm. the confusion is that there was, or we think there's, there's a play called Don Horatio that seems to be connected with this play and is potentially, you know, a part one to the Spanish tragedy following, that may follow the same lines as this play. Is The question is, is it related to this play or is this play something completely different? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so yes. it's something we, I, 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 I want to bring a little bit of history in as we go. I don't kind of want to at this stage because I want to find out how this play ticks on its own merits. Um, uh, I'm loving it. I love this play. Yeah, yeah I, it's I, great. It, it's it's great fun, but I just don't see how you could play it other than for laughs. Yeah, I think that 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 seems to be it's an entertainment, isn't it? Yeah. yeah um, it and and as you're saying, it's it's considerably shorter than many plays of the period. Um, so I'm just wondering whether it, it's almost done as a post-dinner entertainment or something like that. Well, we can talk about potential performance contexts also um, in the future. I mean, there's, there's, there are lots of plays that are this short. I mean, the, the, the period is, is, is full of exceptions to the idea that there's a two hours traffic. Um, there's plenty of, I mean, we did last year the Life and Death of Jack Straw. I mean, that's mm. about the same length as this, and that's a history play. Yeah. So, you know, um, and... And that is also severely buggered about in some fashion, um, but it's still a great play. I, oh, I wow. like to think of these plays as um, almost like the film script version of of a longer play. Uh, sort of it, when I come to producing this, is going right. Okay, there might have been more material, but people have cut it down to bones. I don't feel that with this. This feels like a very distinct artifact that feels mm. very complete. Yeah, I, I, I think the the thing I would say with the Jack Straw one is that the Yes, the, the script itself was quite brief, mm. but there were plenty of opportunities for having a, a mob scene or a battle scene or a fight sequence that would have padded it out without necessarily anything much more than occasional screams, cries and death death moans yeah i mean it's it's i mean i don't think that they're, they're fair comparisons it's just we happen to have done it mm. and i like to mention things that are on the podcast um in in, in it's just the thing i do um and any I, any 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 more thoughts helen yeah i i'm not in accord with the the rest of the room and i i am sure you know a lot more of the earlier plays than i do I have a great deal of difficulty in seeing this as deliberately comic. It doesn't seem to me to be deliberately comic in the way that plays were deliberately comic, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. it, I, it, I, I have a great deal of difficulty because I can't give you reason, I can't give you a list, but my feeling is that it's it's not intended as a pastiche, but that's just a feeling. Mm -hmm. it may, well, maybe, that... maybe we're looking at it with more modern, more modern eyes. And, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's right. You know, looking at it and thinking, yeah, we can see the brokers' men. We can see, yeah. you know, you could you could see the pythons doing doing this, yes, and playing I... it. I mean, the only one I can think of is the Night of the Burning Pestle. Mm, yeah. Yes. And it's very clearly signified there what is comedy. The, I mean, I mentioned, and it might be a case we'll have a better idea in a, uh, from network, next week onwards when I mentioned John Marston, because their tonal shift and comedy, um, he does a lot of games um, and uh, a lot of boys company material does a lot of very strange stylistic games and i wonder whether there's an element here i'm not very familiar with yeah. Marston, i must say um 
Uh, and that's part of the thing is that the more plays we do, the more we can reference, you know, we can, we're mm. creating a, yeah. a network of, of plays that we've either read or we can listen to having read rather than reading mm. um, and get a much better sense. I mean, I don't know the answer and I, I, I'm very pleased that you put the disagreeing voice because I, th I think it's important that we don't necessarily all fall into step and that we keep our options open. Um, I, 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 I think it's going to be very hard to sell this to a modern audience that way, but whether the original audience was, was doing is, is a very valid, valid question. Uh, Tamara, I think I saw you waving earlier. Or has um, the thought passed? It was, it's, it, it was backtracking to what Sarah said about the, um, about somebody going away and writing this in response to um, the Spanish tragedy. Um, because I remembered uh, at the very beginning when I mentioned, oh, look, they're mentioning the blood and the gore immediately. And it's almost like somebody went and saw the Spanish tragedy and then um, references it here. Um, but again, the, I might be reading into this way too much. Well, uh, that's the thing is the Spanish tragedy has such a long life. I mean, that, it, you know, it, it's, it's a, you know, from when it appears in the 1580s, it, it, it doesn't disappear. No. Ever. You know, it may disappear off the stage occasionally, but, it, you know, it's always in print. It's always about. Um, it's mentioned all the time. Um, and it has so many sort of bastard offspring um, in other plays as well uh, that you you can't avoid the, what, what, the, what it sets up. And that's the other thing that from, ne uh, from tomorrow onwards, we'll be able to explore much more as we get to see where, where some of those uh, earlier traditions and ideas and uh, set pieces come in. Uh, William, do you have any anything to add at this as we're winding I, down? I have very little to add. I thought that this, I thought Hieronimo was actually also something that was quite popular. I thought it was mentioned several times in uh, in Henslow's diary about bringing it back. Mm. Um, it's very much, I, I, it's not, it, it doesn't feel like one hand. It doesn't feel like one person is mainly behind this. Indeed, it feels like there are several hands that are in the play. Um, somebody who likes to rhyme, uh, likes to make good couplets. Um, that elf thing is bothering me right now. I've got mm. that. We, we've I had the elf twice now. Mm. Yes. Uh, we have. I'll be the he one then, and rid thee soon of this dull, leaden, dull, leaden, and tormenting elf. And then we had the elf towards the end there. Um, yeah just strange there's there's so many little bits the way the uh usage of language that you think like surely they must have pinpointed who uses language like this so i'm i'm just curious i'm really curious to to read the rest of it mm. and to carry on to go on to the spanish tragedy i'm i'm mm. yeah give me an ah. exciting week gloria do you have any additional thoughts just, stage? Um, just that that was really so fun, thank you. But also just from what William was saying about the idea of there being so many different hands, I'm just thinking about the, you know, the different companies and groups of actors and sort of the idea that um, different companies would, would make their own parts or kind of certain actors would play the things that they were best at. So, you know, the idea of there being the one that was the fool kind of and would always play those sorts of roles and i feel like you know potentially this is kind of a, a co-devised piece that was made you know with uh, um, um a ragtag bunch of actors maybe at some point when the theaters were closed because of the plague um or something one of those various times and it was just they were just keeping themselves busy and then someone was like oh let's let's write that down i don't know that's a, a, a random thought hmm. is that that's an interesting thought as to whether that was almost like the way mike lee works with his stuff mm. you know let's do a hell of a lot of improv and see where see where it takes us and then nick take the best bits and construct something out of that well, that's the thing, especially if, if we're talking about material that's had a long life, you know, what happens when actors start messing about with it? Um, sort of something that came up with Gamma Girton's Needle, which is another play which potentially had a very long life before it got printed. And some of the inconsistencies in that text seemed, in my mind anyway, to come from the fact that it had been touring a long time. 
or had been about a long time and actors had sort of shaved bits off it or expanded bits and and uh created elements to that um so yeah this might be part of that long never-ending process of 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 what actors buggering up plays um what the playwright has written um <laughs> does um and that's that's a really interesting unprovable conversation <laughs> and like unprovable things sometimes sarah any final thoughts no i just i mean yeah just i i think what gloria said is uh is really fascinating and probably you know entirely possible because you know it's it's yeah it's unprovable but it's fun to speculate and um as someone who's done a lot of um fringe work myself uh like money is your biggest concern a lot of the time and so if you've got somebody who's if you've got a short comedian in your troupe <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and you're thinking oh right well let's yeah let's 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 have a bit of a riff on the on the spanish tragedy see what we come up with you're gonna create a part for your for your short comedian guy because like he's probably the one who pulls in the the punters but mm. i mean I, i've written plays myself where i've written i've i've written things and then i've thought no 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 i'm gonna change that because there's no way i can stage that or oh i've got so and so in mind for that part and she'd be really good doing this or whatever i mean you it is a practical thing i think that's what we do sometimes forget that you know when it's written down on the page it's kind of ossified to a certain extent isn't it but you know the I, word I, becomes sacred but you're exactly right. it's, that idea. Uh, it's actually necessity a lot of the time a necessity or just like hustling um you know trying to make the best of what you've got yeah, I, I, this, but it is, it is all completely um, unprovable and uh, speculation. That's fun. Well, I mean, the thing about the shortness uh, is, that, of course, if it's a boys' company, then the, then height will be very, very noticeable uh, uh, across a relatively small age ranges. Um, but also, just again, jumping back to Jack Straw, that's got some sh actors who are explicitly said to be very short. Well, maybe it was the same guy. Well, I have to say, I've been on the hunt for a short comedy actor um, in, in, you know, in, in, in drama. And uh, so most of the clowns I've looked at seem to be quite well sturdy and well built. And I haven't come across a particularly short one. Um, and now I'm, I'm sort of, there's, there's a hair running that I want to see where that goes. Kemp? Um, um, hmm? Was Kemp? Well. Will Kemp. Sure? Yeah, well, yeah I, 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 it's not quite the right timing um, for what for what I'm looking for. He's a bit dead. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't stop some people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you just can't help it. Um, anyway, I, 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 think, um, I think we're pretty much done for today. I'd like to thank you all for being wonderful readers and having so much fun with this. We'll do housekeeping in a moment, but otherwise I'm going to stop the recording and say goodbye, everybody. Uh, thank you. Thank goodbye. You.